Hello and welcome to another leak code video. Today we're going to be doing day seven of the JavaScript challenge, and this is going to be function composition. And so in this problem, you're given an array of functions f1 through fn, and you want to return a new function fn that is the function composition of the array functions. The function composition, and then they show what it is. Okay. And the function composition of an empty list of functions is the identity function. You may assume each function in the array accepts one integer and it returns one integer. So if you have an array, pretty much what they're saying is like if you have an array of functions like f1, f2, f3, and so on, f4, what you actually want to do is you want to call these functions on an element x backwards and return the result. So it's going to be like call f4 on x, and then store that in x, and then call f3 on that, store that in x, call f2 on that, Store that in X and finally call F1 on that. So what does that look like that from some things we've done previously? So this looks like a reduce, right? Where you're where you have an array of items and you're just doing something. And so we can actually use a reduce here. And let's actually figure out how we would do this. So let's just um let's just they want us to return a function. So let's just always take a let's get rid of this. Let's just do arrow functions, right? Okay, and so let's let's make a function that takes x and let's get rid of these. So we talked about reduce previously, but we haven't talked about reduce right. And so reduce right is pretty much like reduce, except it goes backwards. And so if you want to iterate through your array backwards, you can use reduce right, and it works like this. So you have functions dot reduce right, which is saying let's call reduce right on our array functions. And now you need to give it a function that takes an accumulator and a value. So accumulator and a value. And in this case, our value is actually our, our function. So let's make it a better name. Let's call it fn. This is going to be the function that we're going to be currently on. Okay. And then what are we actually trying to do in our thing? So what we're trying to do here is we are trying to actually return function called on the accumulator, right? And this is going to be backwards. And then we need to give it an initial value. So let's give that initial value x. So we, we do we do just what we did like in my drawing, but we do it like this. And so the accumulator is going to be x. Like it's going to be what x is currently. Function is going to be the current function in our array. And we're going to be traversing backwards. And fn ack is just the function being called on x. And this x is actually just the initial value of x. It's, that's the only time it's used. If you don't give it anything, I think it's it initialized to zero. So we're going to return a function that takes in x, goes through the functions backwards, and calls uh, the function on x every time. Even though it says ack, ack is really the updated x. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, and so that works. Let's try to submit. I don't think we actually need to try to submit because I think they only have one test case here, but. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Now, another way to do it is there is something called a reverse in JavaScript. And so when you do something like this, so most array methods that I found in JavaScript actually create a new array, but this actually reverses the array in place. And so now we can actually use that. So we can actually just use like use this method to norm do a normal reduce. So let's go back to our previous code actually. And so instead of that functions that reduce right, we can actually do functions dot reverse. And now we can try using our original reduce. And so that works as well, right? Because reduce right is pretty much the same thing as a reduce. So we're doing the same thing where we have a reduce, we give it a function that takes an accumulator and a value, returns some kind of, you know, whatever you want, and then an initial value. Okay. And so now let's let's do some more stuff, right? So let's try to think how we could do this in other ways. Well, we are going to use this reverse function just to make it easier for most of our stuff. But let's try using a for in loop, for example. So we're going to say for let fn in. And then we are going to do reverse here because we want it to go the other way. So reverse. Then what we can do is we actually do still need to return a function, though. So let's just return a function that takes x and returns uh, this stuff. OK. So now that we're in this for in loop, what are we actually doing? Well, the um, 
this is all the functions. And so let's figure out how we would do this, right? So actually this is, we, this shouldn't be function. This should be more like function index because remember that uh, in a for loop, in a for in loop, you're getting a string index of a variable in an array. Okay, and so now we can say x equals functions fn index. And so I think that should work. We can return x at the end. Let's see, we screwed up. Okay, well, let's see what we did here. X equal, oh right, so functions fn index is the function. Now we actually need to call it on x, right? There we go, okay, perfect. So now let's try using a for of loop. And so how would this change? So this would just be, so instead of fn index, this is now the actual function, it's the value, not the key. So we can just call x equals function on x. That works. And now finally, let's try using, so instead of using reverse, Let's just use a for loop and let's just go backwards, right? So we can just say something like this for i equals functions dot length. And then i is greater than or equal to zero. i minus minus here. And so we're going to be just iterating through the array of functions backwards. And we can do the same thing, right? So functions i called on x. And we can return x here. Okay. Uh, let's see here. All oh, right, so this needs to be length minus one. So we are at bounds. Okay, and this also works. So there are some other ways to do it, like a for each or whatever, but I just wanted to briefly introduce you to the reduce right and how to reverse an array, and then the, once again, go over these standard loops. So that's actually gonna be it for this problem. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.